Welcome to another episode of the Process and Automation Podcast. We are extremely passionate about all things process and automation. Hence, we uh, yeah, can't stop recording these new episodes. And yeah, thanks a lot for so many questions uh, we receive uh, into our community. And uh, today we will make um, one of the, those questions the topic of our episode. Um, one of the big questions we are being asked is how how can you find the right automation solution and as you know automation can be very powerful for your business um, uh, it will be used for um, for automating mundane repetitive tasks um, in in businesses so yeah today we will go through um, top 10 uh, questions um, yeah, you can ask yourself and also the vendors um, you're speaking with to um, to find out how to um, uh, choose the right automation solution. And um, yeah, Arnold, let's uh, let's kick it off. Thanks, Sasha. Yeah, a nice intro. And I think that these are kind of ten typical questions to find that right automation solution. And uh, the the first thing. Um, you need to ask yourself is, is is sort of what type of automation you know do i actually need um you know you're going to go out go out there and start um at, you know evaluating uh, these solutions and you know and you have to keep in mind that there's not a one size fits all um you know so there's not going to be something out there that that's going to sort of um fit everything that you know in terms of solution fit fit everything that you want to do with it um, you know, a lot of solutions are very specialized and it can be sort of very confusing, um, you know, to, to, to make a decision, um, you know, when you do your research. Um, so there's typically sort of three types of automations out there um, that I want to discuss. The, the first one is front-end automation. Um, and this is, is really low and no code, code automation used by business people out there that hasn't got technical expertise to to build forms or workflows and and, and processes um and you know typical examples of this is uh, you know business pro process automation sequences so these are workflows um and this is human to human workflow um uh, sequences um things like robotic process automation or or rpa so again these these are what we've considered to be front end automation and then of course you know we we get the back end automation and you know these are uh, sort of batch automations that orchestrates things like file movements jobs and and processes um that you know need to be instantiated in a, a you know in a specific sequence or at a specific time so an example of this would be um workload automation or service orchestration and um you know or automated um platform automation so so these are kind of your 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 back end um type um automations and then the third one is really um data automation so so these are sort of data automation like extract transfer load jobs so etl so it's typically automation that moves data from transactional systems uh to data warehouses for example um and in that process transforming the data and normalizing it um and again you know uh, etl jobs we, we've heard about that but you could use um you know automation tools to um, you know, to do that as well. So again, it's that what type of automation do I need? It could be one of these three, the front end, the back end, or the data automation or combination of, of the three. Cool. Yeah, that's great. And uh, yeah, let's, let's go straight to the next uh, question uh, or to the next topic here. Uh, should I choose an automation solution specialized to my industry? Yeah, that's that's a very good question. Um, yeah, if possible, you should choose an automation solution um, that has already um, some some ready to go um, elements for your industry. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you you have special things and topics and uh, processes um, relevant to your industry, and um, yeah, the benefits of uh, going with with a vendor who is specialized in the industry is um, yeah 
it very, very much so the, the time to market. You have already so many pre-built out-of-the-box integrations, connectors, um, and lots of templates uh, for you ready to go. Um, so yeah, that that allows you to go um, so much quicker uh, live with the with the, with the pro product or solution instead of building everything from scratch. Um, I think that makes makes uh, really really much sense. Um, and at, at the same time, these specialized um, vendors and software solution providers, they speak your language and um, it really makes sense to not explain again and again what you want to achieve. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's a, that's a huge benefit there. And um, obviously, the, the industry expertise uh, puts them in a, in a position to guide you really effectively um, uh, during that implementation of the automation project. Um, so that is also supporting um, the return of investment you're looking for um, uh, very quickly. And yeah, and they, um, they've likely solved your specific problem before with other clients. So, so it's not unknown territory. So they can confidently say this helped this company, this enterprise with this problem and, uh, and, and produce this kind of value. And um, if they have lots of those use cases, this is a really good um, uh, good path to go. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the next one I want to talk about is installation options. So let's assume that you've actually identified a type of automation. You've actually looked at your industry. Maybe you found an industry-specific um, vendor out there. Uh, next, you need to understand, you know, what are my options um, when I actually deploy the, the platform? So typically, uh, we've got on-prem deployment and, you know, some automation solutions can only be installed on-prem, you know, and if you're considering uh, on-prem installation, you know, ensure you factor this into your long-term business strategy. So, for example, if you move, if you plan to move your data um, and your data centers to 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 the cloud at some point, you know, uh, obviously on-premise installation wouldn't be the best fit in in this scenario. Um, the next option is obviously cloud. Um, you know, and again, some organizations out there doesn't want to have anything to do with cloud for for various reasons. Um, you know, other organizations are all you know for cloud. And there's sort of the bit in the middle where a lot of people are sort of warming to this idea of hosting their business critical applications on the cloud. So you'll you'll probably want to evaluate your your organization's current appetite for cloud and you know look a bit into the future at your future plans when uh, considering uh, you know a, a cloud installation option or a, a cloud hosted uh, service. And of course, the, the the third option is what we call a uh, hybrid deployment. A hybrid deployment, as the name suggests, is a combination of on-premise and cloud. So it could be that you've got um, some on-premise installation, and that could be uh, for various reasons that you want to keep that on-premise. And there might be some elements that you want to push to the cloud. So we've we've seen this um, mm -hmm. in a lot of the the vendors we use that people want to have the the bots um, on prem, but the actual orchestration of the bots they're quite happy to push that into the cloud. So so hybrid is sort of the the bit in the middle where you could perhaps keep business critical data uh, on premise, and then anything mm -hmm. operationally to do with your automations um, that's not business sensitive data. Or client data, you can push that into to the cloud. And you, with the hybrid solution, you can also have a path where you can migrate from on-prem uh, to to cloud. Of course, if you use um, this type of um, uh, environment, um, it it is important to to obviously consider connectivity between your cloud and the on-premise. And when you deploy your solutions, you need to make sure that um, you're aware of all this sort of parameters and variables at stake uh, so that your automation doesn't break when you um you know move um you know uh, processes from from your on-prem to your, your your cloud environment or you know there's a solution that you deploy that where there's dependencies um you know, it could be connectivity and all of these sort of things so it's, it's just one to, to to look out for because effectively uh, you are in two different places. You're relying on your on-premise infrastructure, but also the cloud infrastructure that needs to be uh, connected. Oh, cool. Thank you. So, yeah, the next big uh, 
a question you should ask him um, yourself is uh, and vendors um, uh, when you do your research and speaking with with these vendors. How does pricing work? So um, it is very certain that there are many different pricing models out there for for these automation solutions um there's so there are normal subscription models um there's like pre you you pay them annually up front you pay them monthly you pay them by the users by the servers by the number of apps there's so many different variations out there and um, some are far more complicated than others but yeah it really needs to be um looked at what 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 your specific use case cases are and how your company wants to use um, uh, the software. So um, key sort of pricing considerations I can share are, um, yeah, there are definitely a variety of pricing models on the market. And um, yeah, it's really, really um, uh, good to remember. So one isn't really better than the rest. So it really needs to fit um, with your with your needs and ask each vendor uh, you bet how their pricing model works and how it will impact you long term. So some of them might might have a, a really good starting offer and then further down the line, um, yeah, it's crazy. Or once once you're sort of locked in too much with so many different things, it's really difficult to get out of it. And so maybe it yeah. wasn't a good deal. So yeah, find out what features and services are included in the base price and what what's considered to an add-on. Um, um, particularly ongoing product support and training. So yeah, all those things are very, very important. And um, yeah, pricing is very, very interesting um, for sure. Yeah, and, and it kind of leads on to the next one where you want to see what's inclu included in your license or your subscription agreement for your automation software. Because you know, you know, you want to know that you're establishing a good partnership with your vendor that would help you uh, perhaps install the software and build out and configure some of your initial use cases. Um, you know, you might sort of look at a particular pain point that drove you to seek out a solution in, in the first place. So, you know, look out for for vendors that's willing to help you on that. Um, you know, and, and get that into obviously your your contract. Um, make sure you've. Um, you know, got a um, installation and configuration of the, of the platform included if it's not already. Um, and that way, it just means that from the start, you've got sort of best practices in place already, and it's a solid foundation. And also, you might need to migrate from your existing automation tool. Uh, in, in tool. Um, so just make sure that, you know, any, any existing sort of automation uh, jobs, um, that needs to be migrated to a new tool that, you know, all the scripts are written and they, you know, they, they are actually fit for purpose to, to, to migrate that to the new um, platform. So you might want to include that in, in your agreement as well. Um, you know, in this, in this way, uh, you, you know, you're going to move to your new system from the old one very seamlessly without, you know, processes falling apart and things falling through the crack. And there's all sorts of roadblocks, um, you know, that, that keeps you from making, um, uh, you know, a, a success of your automation solution, um, you know, when it goes live. And also the, the last point here is, is really, um, you know, ask vendors if they help clients migrate from old systems of their software and if they have a migration framework and what sort of success they've had in the past doing the migrations. You know, don't again, don't be afraid to ask all of these tough questions because we do see these a lot where migration is something, uh, data migration, for example, process migration, um, is not uh, usually discussed. That's something we usually try and 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 put to the forefront quickly because we know that's a real world thing that's that's going to come back mm. um, in at some point. You know when you roll out or when you migrate to to automation platform. Yeah, I think that that uh, also brings me very nicely to the next question uh, you should ask. Um, so what assurances do I have if the product isn't delivered on time or doesn't work as promised? Yeah, that's obviously a really, really important one. Um, so how can you protect your investment uh, and to avoid situations um, where where that doesn't work out so well as, as promised? Um, yeah, make really sure the vendor you choose is a trusted and well-regarded um, uh, partner and player in their, their automation space and in, in the partner network. You may be... Um, um, yeah, and the partner network, the vendor um, has has around them. Yeah, ask the vendors if they offer any product and implementation guarantees. Um, 
So obviously, it is not just just the responsibility of the of the vendor to to make it a success. So it's very often, obviously, um, a combined uh, um, uh, sort of uh, result. Um, so I can imagine when it comes to guarantees, it's always um, uh, how how much has have have you provided as a as a business to make it a success. So yeah, anyway, so there might be some vendors they are offering specific guarantees yeah. um, for when when it goes wrong. And um, uh, but of course, if you have chosen a really really good vendor, the chances are very low that the project really really fails dramatically. Um, yeah, consult peer review sites like Peer Spot G two and yeah. uh, Gartner Peer Insights. So yeah, you f- you hear a lot of testimonials there for these specific um, products, uh, mm-hmm. and then then you can again uh, reach out to those specific vendors and ask who is your best partner or who has been the best partner. Those kind of things. Hey, and ask vendors if they can provide names of clients um, uh, of whom they have solved a similar problem. Uh, yeah, and ask those references for for their real honest review um, of the vendor and the partner. So, yes. yeah, very very important to get a really good partner to make this uh, as uh, a success. Yeah, and again, this 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 flows nicely into the next one where you have to raise you know the 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 question about support options because again no matter how sophisticated your infrastructure automation is um and how good it it is uh, you know it will inevitably encounter a a problem at some point and that could be an external factor and that's got absolutely nothing to do with the automation solution so uh for example a supplier might forget to put a file in a specific place um as a silly example um and you know uh, you you were su- uh, supposed to rename the file and th- that could cause a, a, a automation workflow to fail um so you, you you need to make sure that in scenarios like that when things do fall over technically that you have the right support in place to handle these situations so that you know all of your mission critical operations are not compromised or impacted for a very long time when these problems occur, um, yeah, particularly around sort of crit- critical month end periods or court- end of quarter periods or end of year processes uh, or periods where processes needs to 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 run and need to be com- completed um, in you know on time and in a specific order. Uh, so again, ask the vendor if uh, you can uh, look at the types of support um, that's included. And also look at their the, the support agreement. You know, look at SLAs and and uh, those sort of sort of things. Um, important questions, obviously, to ask is, is you know do they offer twenty four seven support if that's what you needed? Uh, you know, how's the support um, being conducted? Is it over email? Is it phone support? First line support? Um, you know. Can you get hold of somebody at the middle of the night if something has gone wrong? If you're in various time zones, um, and again, you know, vendors will charge slightly more for premium supports, um, and in some cases, you know, uh, this is what can distinguish um, to otherwise seemingly identical vendors out there. If you know what I mean, so it's just the support options. I think is is quite important to to look at as well, and training is 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 a big one as well that you need to ask, you know, what type of training is offered because it is imperative that you also find out, you know, what, what, what does the training academy look like from the various vendors? Um, you know, ask them what the training entails, ask them for the course curriculum. Um, is it virtual? Is it on site? Uh, is there a, a certification process? Um, and again, you know, when the time comes for you, for your vendor to build out your, initial use case, make sure your team, um, you know, will be able to, um, you know, uh, participate in, in training co- courses. And also when the vendor builds out, they can correlate what they're seeing, what the vendor is doing when they build out maybe initial use case versus what's in the training. Um, you know, so, so that's, that's quite important. Um, and, you know, ask the vendors um, if they provide advanced training that allows you uh, to, to take your knowledge to the next level. So you're not just after one-on-one training. Um, you know, if if your primary automation administrator or operator uh, were to leave the company, um, you know, mm. ask ask your vendor if there's ongoing, um, a, 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 well, if there's there's opportunities to obviously uh, train various other people as well. And so, so, so there's always a kind of contingency. Um, so keep your training program alive. 
Um, so if there's sort of um, turnover with inside your team, um, or or you you know you, you lose members of the team, um, you know there, there's not knowledge loss or gaps in the administration of your of your um, solution. So again, ask what training um, they offer, what does it entail, uh, how is it presented, um, and you know look at ongoing training opportunities. Make sure that's in place. Um, so that, like I said, if if there is a, a, a member of staff that leaves, um, you know, you're not left in a very difficult situation because mm. nobody knows how the system works or how it can be administrated. Yeah, very very important, and um, indeed very important when you think about um, uh, managing and maintaining your automations um, uh, on, on ongoing. Um, uh, maintaining your automations because it's usually not a thing you you install once and then you just leave it there so automation and process and workflow uh, there's always change always improvement going on so yeah make sure you always have someone uh, maintaining your automation Arno touched on that so what happens if when people leave so it's really really important to to have um, that team available um or get someone in who is um, uh, managing that for you. So it's a managed automation service. And um, yeah, so obviously that that person, either internal or external, should have that skill set um, yeah. to to manage that um, that automation you have in place. Yeah, if something goes wrong, there's uh, there's always dedicated support um, and um, in place, um, and will be alerted to the rough issues really fast. Um, yeah, and then a vendor should also have that, as Anna mentioned, um, uh, maybe that that kind of service to come in and um, help you identify automation opportunities that that hadn't even considered. So that's sort of the ongoing thing. Not always uh, when there's a problem, but how can you improve? How can you do more with the automation uh, platform? So that that should be either done internally or either. Uh, or with a managed service done by partners or by the vendor itself. So yeah, very, very important to get the huge success of your automation. Yeah, so hopefully, um, uh, you know, depending on where you are with your search for automation platform or vendor, uh, hopefully these um, must ask 10 questions that we've um, just discussed um, will help you to, um, you know, come up with 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 a perfect sort of list of uh things you want to discuss with these vendors um and it's 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 a great place to start because it gives you sort of a defined structure to 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 really shape this conversation with the vendors and really to to you know to gather about understanding on you know what differentiate different vendors from each other and hopefully that will help you to determine the, the 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 you know the type of vendor that you you wish to work for, and I would say it's 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 very critical to 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 go through, um you know this checklist, um and there might be some other questions that will, um you know follow up as well from this um mm. as well, um but it, you know my view, you know in my mind essentially this is this is a very good starting point, finding that right automation solution provider. Yes, uh, you just mentioned uh, um, follow-up questions, maybe, but um, yeah, our community, uh, the automationguys.net community, is maybe the right place as well to to jump into and to share share your questions and discuss uh, your topics around maybe exactly that topic we discussed today. Um, yeah, head over to the automationguys.net, join our community. Um, yeah join our uh, subscriptions uh, sandbox to really play around with automation uh, yeah and more so yeah um the automation guys.net and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you there so um yeah we will record more episodes and um, looking forward to welcoming you back very soon and until then let's automate it Unfortunately, that's it again with this episode of the Process and Automation podcast. If you like this episode, please give us a five-star rating and don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss any upcoming episode. We hope you will tune in next time and until then, let's automate it.